So we just had a chaotic week in the US or I should say global banking system where uh, a series of bailouts came out from Federal Reserve as well as US Treasury. And now we saw the contagion effect moved across the pond in the euro where the Swiss National Bank was trying to bail out Credit Suisse and then being acquired by UBS. In the middle of all of this, we just got the national housing data from Korea for Canadian housing market. And we saw some eye catching figures, both for year over year basis, as well as monthly basis as well. So we will touch upon all of these things in this video. Stay tuned till the end and let's get back to it. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Yasin Nizami and I make these videos to educate my audience about the real estate market in Canada, particularly in the GTA, as well as some macroeconomic factors, some geopolitical situations, some investing strategies. So if you are interested in any of these topics, consider subscribe and let's get back to our topic of the day. So according to Korea, so the, we have some eye catching figures. The national home sales actually rose 2.3%. Uh, on monthly basis, but it is down really 40% compared to last year, February. So the February to February comparison shows 40% decline in the home sales, but on a monthly basis, it is actually uh, uh, slightly going up, you know, 2.3%. Uh, the number of newly listed properties just dropped to 7.9% month over month. Uh, and the MLS index, which is basically a home, home price index, uh, nationally we measured uh, that actually went down 1.1% on monthly basis but on a yearly basis it is down 15.8% so there's a significant sharpest steepest uh, decline since this index was created back in 2005 and if you saw the the national average home sale price uh, the average price it is actually uh 18 percent decline year over year uh you know compared to furry so eye-catching figures the housing market is still sliding down from both from uh sales activity perspective as well as from pricing perspective so the inventory is really not there right so i think one of the reason is the sellers are also not selling their properties because if you don't have you know options to buy because the seller has to sell and then buy again so if you're not getting options to buy, why would seller you know, take a risk of you know, putting their house on the market where they don't have any other option to buy from? So that is being played in the market and the market is kind of frozen, right? Uh, in the US also, we are seeing that a lot of people who bought the property two years ago when uh, they locked the rate you know, sub 2% or sub 3%, they're not selling it just because when they refinance their home for the next purchase, they will have to qualify for, let's say, you know, six plus percent. So that's one of the reasons why in the U.S. people are not selling it, right? E even though the buyer demand has gone down, but the seller is also not selling it just because of that reason. So the market is kind of frozen uh, at the minute and there's no sales activity happening. Uh, what will happen in the spring market? We don't know. It will uh, literally depend upon the data and the overall macroeconomics figure. But what we're seeing in the banking system it's really, really concerning because it's not related to uh, Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank or, you know, Silvergate. It is systematic. At least it seems to be systematic because we have seen uh, all the warning signs from the yield curve inversion. You know, this is not just one yield curve inversion. It's happening across the board. U.S. Treasuries, Canadian Treasuries, Euro Futures uh, Curve, Japanese uh, bond. And, and, and when we look at China, like China is kind of stimulating the economy again. So they are reducing the rates just to, uh, you know, thinking that, you know, maybe this is systematic and this will affect China. So they are jumping the gun and trying to reduce the rate to stimulate the economy a little bit. So this is certainly uh, not related to a, an isolated event like SVB, but seems to be uh, very consistent and systematic. One of the reasons why we're seeing that this is a systematic is because when we look at the Federal Reserve balance sheet, it has ballooned literally in the last week by $300 billion uh, in assets. So they just acquired $300 billion assets from their regional banks, uh, which in itself is not QE. People are saying it's not QE, but 
the result, the end result is same. They are, they're kind of, you know, pumping the liquidity in the banking system, which will definitely uh, make them uh, liquid again in terms of providing the deposits back to the depositors. There's a lot of crisis uh, that we are seeing as a result of that. Plus, uh, one of the reasons why we are seeing it is also systematic is the Federal Reserve is also kind of extending the credit lines, right? They're extending credit lines. They are also uh, uh, extending the credit swaps with different central banks like Bank of Canada, England, uh, Japan, and other central banks. So all of these signs is kind of showing us that something is systematically wrong in the global financial system. What it is, we don't know exactly because a lot of people are speculating about that. But if this was related to one single bank or two single bank, we should not be seeing crisis happening in Credit Suisse, uh, in you know First Reserve Bank, and the, these credit lines being extended. These are the signs showing us that something is definitely wrong in the global monetary system. So I think this time will tell you know, how things will evolve and we'll see the market will also behave. The, the amount of you know, volatility we are seeing in the bond market, we haven't seen this since you know, back in the uh, dot-com bubble or even beyond that in 1987 crash. So this is something really, really, really uh, significant and uh, people are kind of downplaying it a little bit in terms of uh, in, the, in the mainstream financial media. So uh, we will see over the time, you know, uh, how things will evolve. Uh, a lot of people have speculated that Federal Reserve uh, may increase 25 basis point uh, on March 22nd next week. Uh, maybe they will they will take a pause. If the market is kind of accepting this narrative that this, the Federal Reserve and the, the big banks are kind of trying to save the system, maybe uh, the market will accept the 25 basis point hike and then try, things will try to settle down a little bit. So time will tell. Uh, these are things that I'm, I'm observing. For the Canadian real estate market is also very tight. You know, so sellers are not selling. Buyings are, uh, the buyers are also sitting on the, uh, at, the, at the edge and the interest rate uh, movement is also not helping them a little bit. So the bond yields have come down, not because of uh, the economic conditions, but because of the banking crisis. Uh, whether they stick uh, for long time or not, uh, we will see in the next two weeks uh, anyway. So that's what uh, I got for you. So if you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and uh, put your comments down below and I'll see you in my next week video. Take care.